We're going to walk and shop around Clifton while sharing some of its history along the way. Clifton is tiny, adorable, and packed with a bunch of historic homes and buildings that have been relatively untouched since the 1800s. This is our first time here, and this town is so charming. It is. It actually feels like a little New England town. This building is open daily and sells everything from toilet paper to a freshly grilled cheeseburger, according to their website. That's because this store is also home to the Main Street Pub. I want to go inside and see if it's more of a general store or a restaurant or both. I'm curious. Well, that was not what I was expecting. I could hardly call that a general store. I know it's like mainly a restaurant now, but like, I don't know. I thought it would be a uh, fit more of the aesthetics of the outside. Where was the toilet paper? I don't know. The website that said that they sold toilet paper. I didn't see any. But they do sell 50 cent gummy bears. That's true. <laughs> there are so many historic homes here. And each of them have a sign in front of them that tells you a little bit about their story. So we're just going to look at a couple and feature them here, but I could spend all day looking through these homes. Robert R. Buckley was the first mayor of Clifton and one of the original owners of the Buckley Brothers General Store. He built this house as a wedding present for his bride, Anna. This is where author Jeff Arch wrote the screenplay for Sleepless in Seattle. It has a little fairy friend in the window. Hi! Have you ever seen Sleepless in Seattle? No. Me neither. It's going on my watch list. Although I do wonder why did he come to Clifton to write about Sleepless in Seattle? The vibes of Clifton are not at all the vibes of Seattle, but... Yeah, that's a good question. I guess Sleepless and Clifton doesn't have the same <laughs> ring to it. I guess not. Now we're going to what was the first schoolhouse in Clifton. This was the home of Susan Hetzel, who organized the first elementary school in 1869. School sessions were held in her house until an actual proper school building was built. Susan Hetzel was one of the founding members of the Daughters of the American Revolution. I do think it's a very charming home, but I do wonder how it looks like under all the renovations that have happened to it, you know? Yeah, it's definitely had a lot of like modern touches added to it, and mm -hmm. it looks nice, but yeah. I'm sure it looks really different than how it originally looked. <laughs> right. While there's not a ton of shopping to do down here, we are going to go to some antique stores that this area is well known for. I'm in love with this store. It is so cute. Everything is just beautifully decorated. Oh, I love it. Next, we're headed to Virginia Mercantile, which I believe is another antique store, but hopefully it has more like Virginia related stuff. I love stores like that. Let's see. Well, they definitely have lots of cute Virginia stuff here and a lot of locally owned and grown products. We were gonna get some ice cream at Peterson's because uh, we heard good things about it, but it's closed, it closed for the whole season. I love this gal, look at its name, Clara Mail. The Buckley store, which we're going to next, was once the largest store between Alexandria, Virginia and Front Royal. The former general store is now home to a popular restaurant and wine store. Apparently Nancy Reagan dined here three different times. We're about to eat here too. I don't know if it's the same restaurant, but we're going to have lunch at the... Trattoria Villaggio. Which is an Italian restaurant um, and we're hungry, so let's eat. Our waiter said he was bored, so he just like gave us free wine to taste. We do not drink wine at all, so... Oh god, it smells so bad. Mm. 
That's actually kind of good. Tastes like sparkling cider. Maybe. So we just got out of Trattoria Villaggio, and what did you think of the meal? I thought it was great. Um, the pasta was amazing. We got the rigatoni alla vodka, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was yummy, not too spicy. The complimentary bread was great. I went through a couple plates of that. I would easily go back again. This building, which houses Trummer's restaurant, used to be a popular resort called Clifton Hotel. I know it's not the Clifton Hotel anymore, but I can definitely tell that it used to be one. Resort, I think, is a generous term, but it's beautiful. I, I actually really love the way it looks. Three U.S. presidents stayed at the Clifton Hotel. Including Teddy Roosevelt. There's also randomly a Masonic Lodge across the street. Um, I don't know what goes on in there. What's really gross is this building is just covered in bugs. It's disgusting. We just happened upon this adorable little park and what's so nice about it is they have a playground with a train. Very apt for the theme of this charming town. This buddy bunch is not very stable. No, but I can feel the friendship radiating from this bench. The park is called Clifton Town Park, which was established in 1972, which is actually like relatively young considering how old this town is. I'm a big fan of the park. They have a lot of fun things. Uh, the buddy bench is a real highlight. Yeah. It promotes friendship and unity, yep. which is something we always need in this world. <laughs> Members of the infamous Mosby's Rangers used to worship here. Mosby's Rangers were led by Confederate Colonel John S. Mosby, also known as the Grey Ghost. Basically, Mosby's Rangers would do these really quick and sneaky attacks on Union targets where they'd basically like go in, destroy their supplies, steal their artillery, things like that. And they pretty much never got caught, which is why they became infamous. We're walking to the Webb Nature Sanctuary, which is like a little park area with some trails, but we're like in a really desolate area. Yeah, it doesn't feel like we should be walking here, so no. I'm a little, I'm a little confused right now, but <laughs> maybe it'll become more clear up ahead. Well, we did find it. Yeah, it's just randomly on somebody's driveway. Wasn't expecting that. Even though this trail is only half a mile, it's supposed to be a really good place to see some wildlife. We've already seen squirrels. I think we hear a woodpecker. We definitely hear a lot of animals. Oh, there's more squirrels down there. They're so cute. Willard and Margaret met in Clifton and purchased this property in 1930 where they raised their family. They also began their tradition of Clifton Day, which is an annual craft fair held here every October. You know, as we've walked around Clifton, we've really fallen in love with it. And we already live so close to this area anyway. And I think we have finally found a house that we can afford here. The mailbox is in pretty good condition. During the Civil War, the Union Army commissioned the new Devereux Station here to supply themselves with timber for railroad ties and firewood. A passenger station was built in 1868 and the name was changed to Clifton Station. Oh, I thought I could open it, but it's locked. You can see inside. I really enjoyed our day in Clifton. It's crazy we've lived in this area for like five years and we've never been here. Wild. You can tell it's a town that really cares about its history yeah. and preserving it. 
we will definitely come back to Clifton. Absolutely. What did you like the most about Clifton? Comment below and let us know. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. Have you ever seen Sleepless since... <laughs> have you ever seen Sleepless in Seattle? I have not. Me neither. I, I put them. Um... <laughs> <laughs>